gentlemen, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, presents the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. When there's beer on your mind, your best thought is Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. More people like the taste of Schlitz than any other beer. That's why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. And now, the Halls of Ivy. We love the Halls of Ivy that surround us here. Welcome again to Ivy, Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. The inimitable Dr. Johnson once observed that there must be a time in which every man trifles, and the only choice that nature offers us is to trifle in company or alone. Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, president of Ivy, has made his choice. He prefers to share his trifling, as well as all other things, with his wife, the former Victoria Cromwell of the London stage. Now, Josiah Todd Hunter, Dr. Hall's maternal grandfather, was no trifle in his time, and neither is the moving of his portrait. Now, wait a minute, Toddy. Grandpa's shoulder's sagging. Hitch up his left side a little, see? Yeah, I know, yeah, this wire's in the way. It's got yeah, don't, 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 try, don't try and talk. You swallow the nail. Uh, yeah, here's the hammer. Go uh, ahead, I'll hold the ladder. Now, watch out, darling. Mm. <laughs> Grandpa's on the floor again. Yeah, just like Grandfather, always resisting change. <laughs> he was a reactionary of the most virulent type. Although antedating the automobile, he saw life almost exclusively through a rear-view mirror. <laughs> I wondered why he looked so grim. <laughs> Would you smile if you'd been dropped on your ear? Yeah, but he's always looking that way, Toddy. Yeah, because he was always falling on his ear. <laughs> Ever since that time near the Chickahominy in 1862, in our war between the states... And now, if you'll hand me my grandfather, Vicky, I'll try to hang him again. <laughs> Here he is. There. That's solid. Well, Vicky, what do you think of him there? I'm not sure. Darling, tell me, what, what did Chica have to do with harmony? Well, my grandfather, uh, regarding us so malignantly from the wall was in the fighting along the Chickahominy River during the Civil War. Well, which war was Gramps in, the Civil War or the war between the states? Um, <laughs> Vicky, a trifle more regard for the history of your country by marriage would reveal the fact that they are or were one and the same war. Oh. Well, then why didn't you call it, it the same thing? It is considered in certain circles, just why, I do not know, that the phrase war between the states is a more courteous term. If so, I am willing to use it, even though it is a euphemism. And I dislike most euphemisms. Uh, but this is a very educational few minutes, Doctor. Uh, are you an expert on euphemia? Um, I, I don't know. I've never been there. Where? <laughs> euphemia. I never heard of it. I don't know how you get so confused the way you do. It's exciting. I, I thought we were talking about euphemism. But we were. Are you an expert? No, 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 Vicky, no, not again. Oh. Anyway, a euphemism is a ladylike term applied to a man-sized fact. Oh, it's a sort of literary antimacassar. Oh, 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 very good. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Well, very good. Although... <laughs> Although Grandfather doesn't seem to like it. He doesn't seem to like anything, the old sourpuss. And I'm not sure I like it myself. You know, this side of the room has suddenly become top-heavy. Mm, it's not the picture, darling. I think it's the sofa. It belongs under the window. Well, then under the window it goes. Just think, Vicky. Grandfather, who resisted all change, has now become responsible for it. That's the trouble with most of us. We resign ourselves to the familiar, go through every discomfort to keep things as they are, when a little enterprise and imagination could give us a new perspective, 
widened the horizon of our living. All because of your grandfather. Well, it took a bit of doing, but we found some good in him, didn't we? Well, now, let's get going. Now, you push, and I'll steer. All right. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <clears throat> now, that, a bit more. That, yep. That's it. No, wait, no, Tolly, wait, wait. The carpet's all bunched up. Oh, well, that, that's easily fixed. Now, when I lift the sofa, you, you smooth out the rug under this end. You ready? Ready. All right, up you go there. You got it? Is it smooth? Well, the rug's all right, but you're a bit hard to smooth. You're standing on it. Oh, oh. Yeah. Is, that... <clears throat> uh, is, is, is this better? Well, it is squinch a little. All right, I'm squinched. That's uh, better. Is that better? Now, you hold it steady. I will. Uh, oh, my. Uh, what's the matter? What a pity. Look at that hole. Just look at it. It's a burn, I guess. Uh, Victoria. I've been trying so hard to make that rug last. You'd never suspect that behind a sofa... Uh, uh, Victoria. Right place was a, well, it wasn't even worthwhile for me to give up my pipe. I uh, Victoria. <laughs> what is it, Toddy? All my life I've tried to hold up my own end, but there comes a time... <laughs> ...to let go. <laughs> No hole in the carpet anymore. It's in the floor now. <laughs> I think the sofa will stay where it is, Victoria. <laughs> well, I don't know, Toddy, there's still something wrong. It... Well, while you decide what it is, I'd better answer the door. Yeah, it must be the cleaner, darling. He promised to bring back my pink coat and skirt this morning. Yes, well, don't try and move anything else while I'm gone. Mm, no, 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 let me see. Now, I'm going to win chair over here, and then the coffee table has to go... There. Even if I put that chair there, there's no plug for the lamp. So, no, that's... A... Oh, just hang them up in the hall closet, Toddy, will you please? Uh, both armors? Oh. That sounds like an uncomfortable way to spend the morning. <laughs> Mr. Merriweather, good morning. <coughs> and Mr. Wellman. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Hawk. You'll never guess what I thought you were, Mr. Wellman. What? A pink skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Clarence, you've been called some pretty colorful things in your time... Blue nose, a red menace, a green-eyed monster, and a black pirate, but a pink skirt. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, Mrs. Hall. <laughs> uh, sit down, sit down, gentlemen. <laughs> well, hate to barge in on you like this on Saturday morning, folks, for two reasons. I don't like to be a nuisance, and I'd rather be playing golf. But, Doctor, I wanted to talk to you before the board meeting this afternoon. It's about the beautification program. I thought the board had already approved the plan. Well, one thing we left out. Nobody's ever settled the question of Emerson Hall. Now, I feel... Just a minute, we'll... Merriweather. What? I said just a minute. Why? Because I want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid. As you know, I have stood back of the beautification program. I have stood behind it from the beginning. Four square. Four square? You? Yes, me. You are one square who has stood up against everything. <laughs> this is no time for jokes, Merriweather. Who's joking? There are some forces who want to carry this program to the extreme. When they propose to destroy Emerson Hall with its weathered boards and ancient walls, they threaten to destroy the hallowed heritage of Ivy itself. Who wrote that speech for you, Clarence? <laughs> History wrote it. History, Merriweather. Generations of Ivy graduates who have passed through the portals of this vulnerable, I mean, venerable building. <laughs> the years they have seen... Oh, shut up, Clarence. <laughs> Save it for the board. Anytime you start shedding tears, it's a sure thing somebody's water rates go up. <laughs> if there was ever such a thing as a sincere crocodile, you're it. This is a very serious situation. It is ridiculous that I should constantly be interrupted. I do not propose to permit this type of... Uh, Mr. Wellman... What is it? Um, uh, do, do I understand that you are actually fighting for the existence of Emerson Hall on the basis of such an abstract value as its tradition? What's the matter with tradition, Dr. Hall? Just what, just what may I ask? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I, I'm in favor of it. Well, everybody knows how I feel. I'm all for tradition, per se, but not to the extent of breaking my neck in it. I think we need a brand new building. Uh, needless waste of money. Uh, but that's beside the point. Quite beside the point. We have embarked on beautifying the campus, and you suggest that we destroy one of its greatest beauties. Not to mention the needless waste of money. Sheer waste. That's what it is. Have you taken a good look at Emerson lately, Clarence? Or couldn't you see it through your tears of reverence for our classical tradition? Yes, I've seen it, Merriweather, and I expect to keep on looking at it for a great many years to come. <laughs> well, gentlemen... <laughs> no, 
I, I realize we all have to come to a decision. The one thing we agreed on with regard to our beautification program was that it must be comprehensive. It doesn't do to change things piecemeal. <laughs> I learned that this morning by changing a picture from one wall to another. Let's fight it to a finish this afternoon. That's good with me. Now, come on, Clarence. Let's go. Uh, very well. Uh, good day, Dr. Hall. <laughs> Mrs. Hall. Goodbye, Doctor. And, Mrs. Hall, next time I promise to call only for purely personal reasons. You'll find me on the steps, damp violets in my hand, and a look of shy adoration on my merry weather beaten face. <laughs> need any reason, Mr. Merriweather. We always enjoy seeing you with or without violence. <laughs> hey, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye, gentlemen. See you goodbye. at two o'clock. Well, Toddy, I've been thinking about this room now that we've moved the sofa. I know. We really started something, didn't we? But to quote myself, it doesn't do to change things piecemeal. Now, that must be the key. Now, I'll go. How do you do? I am from the phone company. Oh, yes. Well, come in. It's the man from the phone company, Toddy. Oh? Is he here to put one in or take one out? I uh, understood you wanted a longer extension cord, Dr. Hall. Oh, well, he, he doesn't really want one, but he's getting awfully tired of lying on his stomach in his study trying to reach the telephone. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can just barely touch it with the tips of my fingers. Aggravating. Yeah, uh-huh. I... <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it is. I wouldn't advise a longer extension, though. You wouldn't? No, ma'am. Personally, I'm against long extension cords. They look awful, you trip on them, they strangle babies and dogs. And you never can find the phone. You can say that again. Personally, I'm against long extension cords. They look awful, uh, you uh, trip... Mr. Um, um... Park. Park. Uh, just call me Central. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Park, uh, what would you suggest in place of the cord? Well, move the phone box. It's much simpler and less expensive, and you don't run any risks that way. Uh, let me take a look at that cord. Yes, here it is. You just start at the phone and follow it along, and when you get to the wall, stop. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Well, how does it look? Well, let's see here now. The dial, the dial dial's too fast. Uh, that, that's an easy fix. But I don't like the looks of that old cord. Well, yeah, I know. I've tried everything, but it just keeps on snarling. Well, I'm not worried about the snarls. Oh. Uh, have you got a minute? Yes, have you got a minute? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to show you something. <laughs> uh, you too, Dr. Hall. Mm -hmm. Now, take a look right here. Uh, you see that insulation? Uh, where the wire goes into the box. Uh-huh. A couple of more jerks on that and crash, bam, boom, fuse. Yes. How is that again? Well, you're just real fortunate I got here in time, Mrs. Hall. Fuse, short circuit, clang, 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 fire. <laughs> we have been living dangerously, haven't we? I suppose that wouldn't happen if we had a new and longer extension cord. Well, it'll happen with any kind of cord. Oh. And the longer it is, the more there is to trip over. I've never been in favor of long extension cords. Yes, 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 yes. You, you said that, um, Central. I, I mean, Mr. Park. But, uh, but I need a phone in my study. Why not install it in the simplest possible way? Well, just give the man the order, Doctor, and sis boom ba. The job's done. Uh, where's the study? Do re mi in there. <laughs> I don't know if this will work or not. Oh, fine. I, Nothing uh, like a specialist. I <laughs> guess maybe I'll have to install another outlet. So, do you have to have that desk there, Dr. Hall? Well, I'm used to it there. I don't want to ruin your life, but I'd like to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it ain't good. Isn't. That's sure right. It sure ain't. <laughs> You got some pliers? Well, we have a pair in the kitchen. They need a little dental work on the teeth, though. Look, did, did you just come out with suggestions, young man, or did you bring a toolkit as well? I got some here I guess I can use. Now, I won't bother you folks anymore. I'll be through here in a jiffy. One, two, three. Well, we'll be in the living room if you need us, Mr. Park. Four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to be serious enough about his business. 
I hope he knows what he's doing. But he sounds as if he does. Sounds. <laughs> That's the most accurate description, Vicky. I've never heard stranger sounds than Lowry. he uses to... Lamo! Lamo! You see what I mean? <laughs> I see what you mean. That outburst probably means that he has discovered that my study is bounded by four walls. <laughs> Which reminds me of Mr. Wellman, and I cannot think why. <laughs> but I can. He said it. Weathered boards, ancient walls, hallowed heritage. He's dreadfully miscast in that role. Doesn't sound at all right coming from him. <laughs> One man's cliché can be another man's conviction. <laughs> I'm rather sensitive about Emerson Hall myself, Vicky. It's practically the first thing I remember about Ivy. Dr. Palmer, he was president then, looking down on all us huddled and overawed freshmen gathered together in Emerson to hear his greetings that first staggering week of mm. college. Did you stagger as a Frenchman, darling? Uh, no, I just wobbled as a freshman. I staggered as a sophomore. <laughs> I fell flat on my face as a junior and crawled gloriously through my senior year. <laughs> well, at least I hope you're standing up straight at graduation. Yes, with the, with the staunch support of the proscenium arch of Emerson Hall. <laughs> so you see, darling... Life as an undergraduate began and ended for me in Emerson. Naturally, any judgment I might have about its survival or destruction will be highly colored by grateful memories. Uh, Dr. Hall, uh, excuse me, but have you got a minute? Uh oh. There's something I want to show you. Something else? Well, it, it's not trouble, is it, Mr. Park? Well, it's never trouble with a telephone company, Mrs. Hall. That's nice to know. It's news, too. <laughs> Just look at here. Look at that. Ain't she a beaut? Uh, she? <laughs> I don't know, Mr. Park. Where is she? Right there. Look at that box. Look at those screws. Oh, rusty, aren't they? Well, of course, they've been there a long time. W w what's that uh, spot on the wall? That's her, Doc. Ain't she a beaut? That's where the box was. Well, put it back. The spot looks awful. <laughs> no, that, that's too dangerous. I'm sure happy for you that I came out today. Now, look, now. Let's all be happy with you, Mr. Park. What is that spot on the wall? Feel the wall, Mrs. Hall. Feel it. You got seepage. I have? Seepage? <laughs> well, I'll have the plumber in at once. Wait a minute, Dr. Hall. No, no, don't, don't tell us any more. Well, actually, I, I can't be sure. You can't be sure of what, for heaven's sake? Well, after all, I'm a telephone man. I don't have all this information at my fingertips. I'm just observant, that's all. Mr. Park. Yes, sir? Would you mind telling us what you're talking about? I'd be pleased to. The truth is, Dr. Hall, <laughs> you got a big fat case of dry rot. <laughs> When there's beer on your mind, your best thought is Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. More people like the taste of Schlitz than any other beer. That's why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. Naturally, it takes skill and prime ingredients to brew a really first-rate beer. But there's something else. It takes patience as well. There's no shortcut to the kind of flavor you get in Schlitz beer. And that flavor is due in part to the slow, painstaking process of mellowing. Now, every brewer has his own way of doing this. And the Schlitz way calls for triple mellowing. Yes, for the taste you remember with pleasure, Schlitz beer is mellowed three times. Mellowed by aging the barley till it's just right for malting. Mellowed by aging the malt till it's just right for brewing. Mellowed by aging the beer till it's just right for you. This time-taking process gives Schlitz a taste no other beer can match. In fact, that taste has brought so much pure pleasure to so many people, it has made Schlitz the largest selling beer in America. <laughs> That's around us here today. As we return to Ivy, Dr. and Mrs. Hall are waiting for the young man from the telephone company who's been exploring the nether regions of their house. He's been down in the basement an awfully long time, Toddy. 
Could something have happened to him? I was just wondering if something could have happened to us. Why should we accept him as an authority of dry rot? He's from the telephone company. That is, we... Vicky, how do we know he's from the telephone company? Well, if you're really dubious, I'll call the phone company and check on him. <laughs> With the box dismantled. <laughs> hmm, dismantled. Remarkable young man. I'll get it. Hello? No, he's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Who was it? Wrong number. <laughs> Excuse me, I heard the phone ring. Uh, was it for me? Yes. Uh, no, I don't think it was. It was a wrong number. Oh. See, Dr. Hall, have you got a minute? Oh, no. <laughs> Later than you think, Mr. Park. Uh, what is it now? Oh, it's nothing. Nothing at all. At least it's nothing to get worried about. Guess what I found down in the basement? You didn't, uh, You didn't come across my old fishing rod, did you? No. Guess again. I know. My scrapbooks, they've been lost for years. No. You want to try again? No, Mr. Park, I don't. <laughs> I obviously do not get the refrigerator nor the vacuum cleaner, and I am certainly not going to try for six packages of your product, whatever it is. <laughs> okay. Come on down and I'll show you. Now, there's one thing you can be happy about. Yeah, at this point, Mr. Park, when you say that, I feel myself getting pale and starting to shake like a leaf. You've got a well-built house here, good, solid beams... Fine bracing and plenty of studs, all in the right places. Yes, except when I try to hang a picture. <laughs> it looks wonderful down here. It reminds me of an old English house, everything secure and substantial. Yes, I should think it's a pretty good foundation. Sure. That's why it makes me boil when I see things like this plumbing of yours. It's a disgrace. Three-quarter inch pipe. Well, that's why we had that trouble with the kitchen sink. Well, you're going to have more trouble, Mrs. Hall. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Park. Yes, sir? Did you ever hear of a man called Frankenstein? Who? Can't say as I have. Does Wait. Dracula ring a bell in your subconscious? No, sir. I, I've only had freshman courses. Uh, you could pass a master's degree in bloodletting. Now, what is the matter with our kitchen sink? Oh. Well, it may go along all right for a while, but one day you're going to wake up and you'll be eating breakfast in a rowboat. Well, you sound even happier about that than you did about the dry rot. Well, it isn't so bad. You certainly weren't planning to live in this house very long, were you, Dr. Hall? I was thinking of it, yes. But, of course, eating breakfast in a rowboat could change my thinking. Well, if you're going to stay here, I'd have the wiring checked over you're sure lucky I came out. Uh, Mr. Park, would it be out of line if I asked you what you brought us down here to see? Certainly not. What I found out here today... Oh, brother, what I've saved you. I got here just in time. Gee, you're lucky. <laughs> the lucky holes. Here we go again. I was hoping I wouldn't find any, but with these old houses, you almost always do. Oh, it isn't. It, is it? Yes, Mrs. Hall. Your dry rod has turned out to be termites. Gentlemen, uh, we still have the most important item on the and agenda. Mr. Chairman. I haven't mentioned what it is yet, Mr. Merriweather. We all know what it is, Clarence. It's Emerson Hall. I want to say that I personally have nothing against Emerson, Except I... that you want to tear it down. As it stands now, it's a hazard to life and limb. I'm only concerned with the safety of the student. I am concerned with the tradition of Ivy. You're concerned with the money, Clarence, and you know it. Merriweather, sit down. And furthermore... Uh, Mr. Chairman... Yes, Dr. Hall. Uh, I agree with you, Mr. Wellman, that Emerson Hall represents a cherished tradition. And I agree with you, Mr. Merriweather, that it constitutes a danger to its occupants. By an unhappy coincidence, I, uh, I found out today that another building on the campus of Ivy, also of traditional value, is in a perilous condition, too. I would like to make a motion that we, that we consider what is to be done with this edifice along with Emerson Hall. What building are you talking about, Dr. Hall? Uh, the house I live in. Why? Oh, I paid an exorbitant price only a year ago for painting and redecorating that house. Yes, and Emerson Hall has been painted any number of times in recent years. But only the outside, Mr. Wellman... The danger lies deep inside. 
I understand, for instance, that Emerson's got termites. You're dead right, Doctor. You can hear him buzzing all the way out to my house. <laughs> well, my house has termites, too. Now, isn't it a fact that Emerson's plumbing needs repair? It certainly does. So does mine. But Emerson Hall, just like the house that is assigned to me as president, has a good foundation and a sturdy frame. With age... Oh, they've both developed a few aches and pains, but they can be fixed. There are generations of hopes and dreams, of study and achievement that have been absorbed in them. There are things associated with Emerson Hall and the President's house that cannot be rebuilt. The question is, are they worth saving? Gentlemen, I think they are. <laughs> Here in the living room. Hello, darling. What? Why, Vicky, look at this room. What happened? Oh, it all got so complicated. I put everything back where it was in the first place. <laughs> all except Grandfather. He looks the same anywhere. Hmm. Did Park ever get around to fixing the phone? Uh, he fixed it. How? Twelve more feet of extension cord. It's all over the house. We can skip with it any time you have a free moment and a feeling of abandon. You should, as the saying goes, live so long. <laughs> oh, the cleaner. I was afraid he wouldn't get here today after all. I'll get it, Toddy. All right. Now, where did he put the phone? It's not, uh... No? Uh-uh, here you are. William, uh, Mr. Park would like to see you. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Hall, but have you got a minute? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Park, I may be leading with my chin. I may be inviting certain disaster. I know I'm asking for it, but yes, I have a minute. Well, the reason I came back is I was really trying to make an impression on you. You did, Mr. Park. <laughs> you see, once I had big ideas about being a construction engineer. I started college, but then there was a war and I never got back again. I've always wanted to. But did you... Did you expect that I might help you get a fresh start? That was the idea. I, I've learned as much as I can with my present job and... I know I need a foundation as, as much as a house does. I thought maybe you'd use your influence Everybody and... talks about starting from the bottom of the ladder, but I've never heard of anybody before trying to get into college through the basement. <laughs> well, it at least deserves encouragement. Besides, Ivy is indebted to you indirectly. It's worth a try. Call me Monday morning and I'll put you in touch with Professor Cummings, head of our engineering school. No, 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 on second thoughts, I might as well call him now. Excuse me. I'd be willing to take any kind of examination or... You any... passed a pretty stiff one right here in this house today. Oh, that's, that's funny. That's, that's really funny. <laughs> no, no, don't tell me, William. <laughs> it couldn't no, be. Shh, shh, no. shh, shh. Absolutely no sound at all. <laughs> Nothing but deep, inscrutable silence. Uh, uh, Mr. Park, have you got a minute? You're right. You need fresh interests. You've spent enough time with the telephone company. The phone is out of order. When there's beer on your mind Your best thought is Schlitz The beer that made Milwaukee famous More people like the taste of Schlitz Than any other beer that's why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. Ladies and gentlemen, in our studio audience tonight is the Joseph Schlitz American Legion Post Rifle Team, which yesterday won first place in the national competition. Our sponsor congratulates the team and salutes all the Legionnaires on the occasion of their national convention here in Los Angeles. Now, here again are Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs> We'll be seeing you next week at the same time at the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. The other players were Herbert Butterfield, Gail Gordon, and Robert Easton. Tonight's script was written by Milton and Barbara Merlin and Don Quinn. Music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Nat Wolf, and presented by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ken Carpenter speaking.
He's lovable. He's the great Gildersleeve, next on NBC.